Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to Berlin Office. Today we are talking again about One Identity, One Identity Manager, and today we decided to talk about containerization in One Identity, containerization in One Identity Manager. Because of that, I have two experts on the desk. One expert for Product Identity Manager, it's Alex Benotto, Senior Program Manager for that product. On the other hand side, Spell Program Manager, Alessandro Festa. He is our containerization expert. And we like to talk about containerization, maybe using Docker, which is our preferred product for that. And the first question could be, hey guys, why we are doing that with one identity and identity manager? All right, well, I'll take that one. So uh, I, I think the, the, there's kind of three main reasons uh, why we kind of decided to pursue uh, support for containerizations, more specific to work around Docker. One, uh, innovation. Uh, as part of One Identity, uh, it's one of the things that we want to be proactive. Uh, we want to be able to support the latest and greatest um, technologies that are out there, uh, new forms of, of uh, APIs, uh, and I think containerization is being able to support that, uh, adding that, that supportability as part of our products uh, will help uh, customers and partners that are going to be deploying our products uh, you know, to the various customers. Uh, two, uh, I would say standardization, and uh, really in regards to how our customers and partners are deploying, uh, allows them to kind of standardize in a better process and how our products get uh, not only deployed but utilized, uh, you know, and also able to adopt uh, various new technologies, you know, by perhaps leveraging a hybrid model or using Azure or Amazon and so on to deploy some of the components of our products. Uh, in a hybrid scenario. Uh, third, I would say TCO, uh, total cost of ownership plays heavily here, uh, which will allow uh, you know folks that are deploying customers and partners to perhaps reduce uh, footprint of some of the components that we have, uh, allows us to then use orchestration or cloud-based orchestrations to uh, provide a better method from a scalability standpoint, especially in large deployment. Uh, I think those are kind of the three that comes comes to mind. Cool. Yeah. Uh, I mean, absolutely. I, I, I get that comment. I'm back on um, Alex uh, being in this case because, um, especially from an innovation standpoint, what we recognize is that the world is changing, um, uh, and obviously we need to cope with these changes. And uh, for example, um, is in the nature of uh, of, our, of this company actually to follow the trend and follow the edge technology, and containerization is one of them. Uh, it's what we expect to see from customers and what we expect to see from um, from partners um, going to ask us more and more this type of technology and and, and this is a really not an easy way actually to have them uh, to follow this technology I'm really sure containerization it's uh, it's fancy it's a cool feature but a good question here is as well which type of customers we think will use this containerization features well, I, I can I can jump on this. Well, basically, I think that what you're thinking is like we are not only looking at the typical identity professional. We are looking at other angles in the customer and the partner's environment. And for example, if we look at the DevOps and we look at the infrastructure, the way it actually is deployed from a customer, what we expect that in this environment, more and more people actually can. Um, request containers they are looking for use containers in their environment so they expect naturally to from vendors like us to support these kind of technologies and so it's more uh, a different approach is not related to the business it's related to the infrastructure it's related to devops it's related to the people actually that they deploy they, they, today they deploy dms virtual machines tomorrow they will ask for containers and these containers can be on prem or could be on cloud and this is a really good way to, 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 to basically to reply to, to their quest and, and still be uh, the same way as we are today. Another question could be talking about containerization and looking, for example, at a product like the Identity Manager, which is a solution framework. Which part of such solution frameworks could be a good part to be put in Docker containers? Or can you put the whole product in there? Or how we will do that? What is the idea of putting things into Docker containers? Well, one of the um, scenarios where we see containerization really fit the bill is 
in the roles of identity manager. So if you think, for example, at the job service role, or you think at the web portals or the application service role, then we see that when we use virtual machine in this kind of uh, identity manager roles, uh, we have a, a waste in terms of um, consumption of CPUs, uh, memory, and this space. That's not because of identity manager itself, but because the virtual machine itself is not optimized to run one single application. When you, instead you go into a container world, you have a layer that is optimized to do that. It only uses the resources that needed to be in that, very, in, in that very moment. So from that point of view, and this is linked back what Alex was saying at the beginning, is that this helps you to consolidate your instances and, and obtain a reduction of your total cost ownership. And, but not, not only, it means that you have a um, faster spin up uh, of the instances and you can absolutely uh, scale them more quickly so it's more efficient uh, to, to a certain level. So looking at identity management means that I can optimize resources, uh, reduce the number of hours that run in these instances and obtain a general optimization of my infrastructure. Um, and that's why actually the container is really useful. It doesn't change the product but at the same time, it optimizes the product's use. Alex, with which product version, from your perspective, we will support Docker containers and Identity Manager? We know we are always talking about roadmaps. We know we cannot directly say, this is the truth, or tomorrow you will get the following feature. But what is the plan behind containerization in the Identity Manager? Um, uh, great question. Well, obviously, it's, it's a technology that um, can be used uh, in theory with backwards or back uh, uh, releases of the product. We have decided to standardize as, um, the, our containers based on the version 8 release uh, that would happen uh, at the end of, uh, towards the end of last year. And we're going to continue to evolve uh, those containers or the container, those images uh, as part of uh, every release uh, that we have. So up and coming 8.01 there'll be some slight updates uh, to that uh, and we'll continue to maintain that. So um, from a supportability standpoint, I think I think we can easily say that it's from version 8 and on. And, and also I think Alessandro mentioned the fact of the job server being one of the components that would be mostly fitted to be containerized. Um, you know, so not just the, the job server uh, we'll be providing images not just for the job servers, but our goal is to also provide images for the uh, application server uh, and the web uh, server as well. About containerization uh, in one identity and one identity manager, do you have use cases we can support with containers today? I mean, I guess you know we kind of talked about this uh, earlier around uh, you know how each customers and, and uh, could potentially utilize uh, partners from an implementation standpoint. Um, but I think there's kind of a three, maybe four uh, relevant use cases. One, obviously, it, from a customer standpoint, as they are you know, getting push, not pushback, but uh, getting uh, pressure yeah. uh, from a DevOps standpoint to start utilizing containers. Uh, you know, a lot of, we're hearing quite a bit from various customers that there's already a demand internally to, to start utilizing that new technology. So obviously the pressure from a DevOps standpoint is going to increase uh, and they'll have to start adapting uh, not just one identity manager, but any of the one identity product portfolio or other products that they may have out there as well. Uh, two, I would say uh, from our partner ecosystem standpoint, uh, it kind of provides them the ability to actually create new process, new type of deployment methodologies where they would then use this kind of hybrid uh, scenario where you know some pieces may be in on-prem uh, they could then utilize perhaps uh, the cloud as well to, uh, to to do these types of deployments uh, three and we'll see probably in the kind of a service provider uh, managed service type of offering where we may end up having a partner or uh, any or somewhere else, some of there that may want to be able to kind of deploy um, uh, the product itself uh, in a way that they want to maybe provide kind of uh, identity as a service offering to uh, a customer base. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, I, I absolutely agree with you. Um, 
I think that the message between these three scenarios is that all these three actors they are trying to reduce the TCO um, in different ways, but in the end, that's again uh, the same story about I want to optimize everything in my environment that is a cost related or anyway, it's just the way to optimize my job. If you look at the customers, you currently say it's, it's like um, the infrastructure is looking for ways to optimize the environment. That means I would like to deploy less virtual machines. I would like to uh, speed up the time I need to spin up or spin down an instance and uh, all the typical scenario of infrastructure. And again, containers is really, really, really good for that. It's really good fit for that. Partners are, on the other hand, looking for a way to optimize their job. If I'm a consultant, I really need to quickly move from one customer environment to another customer environment and do my job. Uh, and containers again really help them. And the service provider is the, is the most interesting scenarios probably, mm. because they run large environments for many, many, many customers, and they're looking for, for a way to reduce the, the total cost, the TCO, uh, because they have this large infrastructure to run, and containers really can help them. And so be able to actually to support them, not only as you, as you currently said, Alex, um, not only from identity management, with all the product portfolio one identity help us to put us ourselves again in, in the innovation top uh, quadrant uh, of the identity vendors, of the software vendors anyways. And that's, that's why we are here. Remembering that a lot of our customers are just talking about a complex product, if they talk about the identity manager, especially because it is a solution framework to solve a complex problem, the question is, by adding the container technology into one identity manager, is this increasing or more decreasing now the complexity? Yeah, that, that, that's a really good question. Well, we are not actually reducing the complexity of an identity project because obviously we are not, let me say, touching or, or changing the way we, we deploy a project in, in, from an identity perspective. But what we are going to reduce is um, the infrastructure complexity. So if you, if you think again, we, we, we discussed it before, that uh, if we think about the way you deploy an infrastructure in terms of identity manager, then you have to set up the VMs, you have to be sure that, that everything is compliant with our best practices, you have to set up multiple environments. So when you use a container, obviously all these complexity is dramatically reduced. You just hit issue a couple of commands and, and, and the job is done. And then probably there's other scenario where actually this complexity could be reduced. What do you think, uh, Alex? Uh, that, that's correct. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking mostly around the uh, in hybrid scenarios yeah. where where partners or customers are going to be looking to extend the current on-prem deployments to start leveraging the, our containers, right? Where you can then use the elasticity of, of the cloud uh, as a whole to then uh, perhaps plug in some areas around scalability, right? And to be able to actually... Uh, create or, or, or kind of launch new or spin, I should say, it's a better word, I should say, new job server specific yeah. to a, a job task. If I have a very large job task that I need to do, uh, I may want to automate that to be able to then go ahead and generate multiple job servers for that specific task. And when that's done, I can then throttle back and use the current infrastructure that I have in place. So I think that is going to definitely going to be a, a true advantage for, uh, for customers that are uh, starting more and more utilize uh, container technology, but I think more specific to our partners and, and then perhaps any other partners out there from a managed service standpoint that wanted to then spin new environments quickly uh, to provide service for other customers. Uh, that's obviously another advantage. They'll be able to have that to do that. And you, you make a great point because basically we can leverage the native uh, Docker capability in terms of high level ability and load balancing to hard to identity managers. So from one side, we reduce the complexity of, of create a complex scenario where we, we need high availability, where we need load balancing. Uh, and we get this almost out of the box from the container infrastructure. So we don't have to worry about anymore about the, this part of a project. And then the, the result is actually the project probably speed up, is way more simple from that point of view, 
and helps actually the, the partner or the, the customer itself actually to, to be more successful. And that, that's the, the ultimate goal of every one identity product in the end. Excellent. Thank you, sirs, for being here and for that conversation. Uh, for you on the screen, we just will continue in this video series with just showing you some simple samples with Docker, again with Alex and Alex, and uh, hopefully you will have a lot of fun with these uh, videos and you will learn something from it. And uh, for that video, just bye-bye and uh, let's watch them.